everyone. Welcome back to the latest lecture session. In the last session, we looked at uh, activated sludge process, relevant variables uh, such as substrate, uh, microbial concentration and so on and so forth. And we looked at how to design a plant as in let us say if I understand the level of uh, this uh, effluent wastewater strength, let us say or S effluent that I want, I can design the plant given a uh, cell retention time or such. In that context or I believe in that same session, we also discussed bulking of sludge. And as I mentioned bulking of sludge, there are various aspects and depending on which source you look at, there is overlap of some aspects. Uh, so, let us just uh, you know take a quick recap of bulking of sludge and then move on to relevant aspects, right. So, bulking of sludge, uh, what is it that we have? We have poor settling, right. And uh, why is that? Because of the different kinds of microbes that thrive. The microbes that I want are typically flock forming uh, microbes that have lower surface area per uh, unit mass, let us see. Right? But if I have microbes like filamentous microbes which have greater surface area per unit mass, they are not going to settle down. In general, you want to have a good mix or not good mix, good ratio of filamentous to flock forming. Right? If you have just flock forming pin flocks, again that is going to be an issue. If you have too many filamentous uh, microbes due to various conditions, again you are going to have higher surface area per unit mass and they are not going to settle down. A quick uh, recap of what we have been up to. So, poor settling characteristics, right? And what is it, uh, where do we typically see that? In the secondary clarifier or the secondary sedimentation tank. And sometimes the situation is so severe that it can overflow, let us say. Again, there are different kinds, but you know, as I mentioned, looks like different sources mix different aspects. One is sludge bulking and in the way that we looked at it, we encompass most of the kinds of issues with sludge settling within bulking, but uh, different sources, you know, distinguish between bulking, right, viscous bulking, let us say, viscous bulking and then foaming, right. So, let us just have a quick recap of these aspects. So, F by M ratio, food to microorganism. And this is from MIT Open Courseware, but the reference they looked at was Reynolds, right? And this seems to be a relatively unique reference in the sense that typically we understand that at low F by M ratio, when the microbes are starving, you typically have filamentous microbes. But here, this reference tells us that even at high F by M ratio, right, it does encourage the growth of a certain kind of filamentous microbe that can lead to bulking of sludge again, but this seems to be a one off reference. In general, low F by M uh, ratio leads to uh, filamentous growth and that will lead to what do we say poor settling characteristics and thus you are going to have higher what do we say microbial concentration being suspended in the uh, secondary clarifier. So, you are not going to get just treated wastewater, you are also going to get considerable microbial concentration out of yours settled sludge, not settled sludge out of your secondary clarifier, right. If the sludge does not settle down, you are going to have microbes out here and they are going to leave with the water. And the other one is with respect to foaming. So, typically nocardia that causes foaming, right here we talked about uh, bulking of sludge and foaming, but typically it leads to foaming. This is the kind and this seems to be prevalent when we have fine diffusers or again the conditions are described. Uh, in different uh, ways and different sources. But one aspect of the principle here seems to be that you have air, right, and nocardia type of uh, microbes which are or the uh, which are relatively hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means they do not want to stay in water. So, they you know want to change phase into or you know would like to stay in this uh, maybe gaseous uh, bubble and they will lift up and this is what you see here. So, severe cases you will have a lot of such uh, what do we say nocardia growth and you will have foaming that is going to go out of your uh, secondary sedimentation tank. And another aspect is because they are going to stay afloat here, right, they are going to spend more time in the tank let us say. So, that means that these kinds of microbes typically have greater cell resistance time 
and so that can lead to some issues let us say. And again different kinds as in low uh, long chain fatty acids at low temperature we discussed this. Another one which is viscous what do we say uh, bulking but which is non filamentous bulking. Low nutrient concentration you know leads to production of bacterial slime and this slime is remarkably hydrophilic. So, you have greater water retention within the cells and thus you know uh, it would not settle down. So, that leads to viscous or slime bulking let us say right. And let us look at some aspects this is from Metcalf and Eddy out here right as I mentioned different sources different aspects, but there are some aspects uh, where you know more or less uh, there is considerable agreement. So, here we are looking at causes of filament growth. So, most often we uh, look at low f by m right pretty low f by m that leads to the formation of a kind of filament or filament bacteria right. And then low DO typically 0 0.5 milligrams or so right in such cases also you will see a kind of filamentous growth. And again low f by m and thus and also completely mixed reactor conditions that is what will typically lead to low f by m right. When do you want to have low f right when your effluent quality is to be low effluent quality low meaning our waste in that effluent has to be low meaning low food for the relevant microbes especially if it is a continuously stirred tank reactor right. If it is continuously stirred whatever goes to has to go out will be the same concentration within. So, if I have low f by m because I want to have low waste or let us say 10 milligram per liter BOD in my effluent right. So, well again this is an extreme case. So, obviously, I will have low f by m in my completely mixed reactor system. And other cases when we have sulphide content or sulphide available and some septic wastewater coming in let us say at different times of the day then you can have a different kinds of uh, different kind of filament growth and nutrient deficiency again leads to a different kind of uh, filament. Again nutrient deficiency when will you see that typically in industrial waste waters where there is not enough uh, nitrogen let us say right and that is one case typically indicative of uh, industrial waste waters then you might need to add nitrogen. Low pH you have fungi right they predominate in typical conditions fungi cannot predominate, but in uh, conditions where the pH is 6.5 or so bacteria are less affected or uh, pardon me more affected than fungi and so fungi can predominate and such. But in sewage right or human uh, uh, sewage sewage treatment plants you typically do not come across this condition that can be a case when we are looking at industrial waste waters. So, as you see different kinds of what do we say bacteria can thrive depending upon the different conditions different kinds of filamentous bacteria. So, before we go about rectifying an issue in general it would always be good to identify the kind of bacteria that is thriving in that uh, what do we say sludge which is bulking or which is not settling down and then try to what do we say rectify the scenario. If not obviously you can uh, what do we say misdiagnose the issue and thus exacerbate the problem. So, that is one aspect. And I guess here we have one uh, decent figure again from Metcalf and Eddy. I think we saw some uh, equation earlier where we had uh, I mean I think KD here, but uh, let me not uh, go to that efficiency and f by m and other variables here I guess right. So, higher f by m means lower theta c right high f by m means low cell retention time. So, as we discussed if the cell retention time is pretty high let us say right again you are going to have a different kind of flock. So, again you do not want to have very high or very low what is it now uh, uh, SRT or f by m right you have a specific range because you want to more or less have a certain kind of uh, uh, filamentous microbes and also considerable ratio of the flock forming uh, microbes let us say. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind right. So, let us uh, move on ok. So, some pictures again non filamentous good settling flock, but again here there are relatively less uh, what is it uh, filamentous uh, microbes, but in general we do not want flocks only flock forming uh, what do we say 
uh, microbes thriving. Why is that? Because uh, if it's the small flock or pin flock, they won't settle. But again, there are some, what do we say, flocks that can settle even in the absence of or complete absence of filamentous growth. And then this is what I guess you typically see. You have some filamentous microbes and you have the flock forming microbes in the relevant proportion or ratio, let us say. Filamentous and I guess flock forming, let us say. So, you these flocks act as bridges or sometimes as the backbone and thus you have good settling characteristics. Flock particles with limited filamentous growth, which is what we want, right? And here I guess we have excessive filamentous growth, the filaments extending from flocks ca causing poor settling characteristics. Again, why do they, why do not they settle well? With respect to filaments, as you can see, greater surface area per unit mass and thus they will not settle down easily. So, when we have sulphide, let us say, I guess the kind of filaments that uh, you have. Again, please note that the organic content will be decreased in the aeration tank or such because both the filamentous and the flock forming microbes will degrade it. But in the secondary settling tank, we will not be able to separate the water from the microbes. And again, that does not serve our purpose. That is what we need to uh, consider. And under low DO conditions, again a different kind of, what do we say, uh, filamentous uh, microbes thriving, right? So, let us uh, move on. Okay, we looked at these aspects, yes, uh, design, we looked at that. We will look at a sample example uh, later and approaches and such. Now, let us look at some of the variations of activated sludge process. In India, a lot of people or many people or many plants typically use only activated sludge process. Uh, only now, I guess, are people moving on to or you know more open to looking at variations of activated sludge process to suit their needs. We will not go into detail because this is a UG class, right? Again, there are different variations by SRT, let us say, extended aeration. So, the key is in extended aeration. So, typically low F by M, okay, and uh, with respect to low incoming load and also the key aspect as we mentioned was with respect to SRT. Solid retention time or cell reten retention time can be around 20 days, while for typical or the usual ASP process, it will be around 5 days, let us see. So, you can see that SRT is uh, or the cells or microbes are spending more time in the relevant uh, system. Again, extend aeration and thus obviously low F by M. Again, we are not going into that in detail, let us say. So, by the kind of mixing, you know, conventional type where you want to more or less try to achieve plug flow, but you cannot achieve uh, what is it, ideal plug flow, completely mixed, but again, this will have its own issues and step aeration, let us say, right. So, this is sometimes practice, but we will not go into that in detail. Only aspect that we need to know is the kind of uh, mixing and the kind of aeration we are providing will depend upon the kind of system that we are trying to promote, let us see, right. Uh, let us move on. Okay, another uh, variation which is used because it leads to remarkably good effluent water quality is the MBR system, which is the membrane biological reactor. So, in general, what do we have? We have this aeration tank where we supply air and mixing, right. And then we have the secondary settling tank where the microbes settle down to the bottom and this relatively clear water is removed, let us say, yes. So, this replaces the settler, right. And this meaning the membrane filters replace the settler. So, you have different types internal immersed in aeration basin vacuum and depending on whether we are applying the pressure or is it by gravity and such, right. Let us see what we have. So, why do we want it first? Obviously, because the quality of the effluent is high. These membranes which can be nano or ultra filtration membranes will not let the microbes pass through the membrane, you know, and thus you will only have water or relatively clear water uh, free of most suspended solids passing through this MBR and then that is going to leave the uh, system. That is your treated wastewater and the microbes are going to stay in the system itself, right. So, high quality effluent, relatively reliable and low microorganism concentrations because you are not really wasting them, they are staying in the system. But obviously, 
you know, compared to what we say, uh, the conventional ASP process, MBR is relatively more expensive depending upon uh, what we say, the maintenance of MBR. You can have fouling of the membranes, right? Over time, you are going to have fouling as in, you have these nano, what do we say, membranes or ultrafiltration membranes, size of the pores is very less. Due to different uh, kinds of either precipitation or microbial growth, you are going to have fouling as in not enough, uh, what do we say, pore space, if I may say so, or pore area for the water to go through, right? And thus, you are going to have to apply pressure, which again means higher cost or less flow rate. So, maintenance is an issue depending on how well you are running the plant. But one other aspect which I should have mentioned here is that it requires lesser area when compared to the traditional ASP process. Why is that? Uh, as in why do we need lesser area? Well, I guess it was obvious. We have the aeration tank and then the secondary settling tank. Right here, you know, we do not need the secondary settling tank. We just need the membranes here. These membranes can also be placed within the aeration tank itself. So, that is another advantage depending upon the kind of uh, system that you are going for. So, usually it uh, has let us say or the area requirements are up to 60 percent lesser compared to the ASP. So, typical MBR uh, membrane biological reactor modules, right, membrane modules, this is what they look like. So, the water has to pass through these, uh, let us say this is a kind of MBR or membrane. Uh, we have the hollow fiber. The water has to pass through these fibers, yes, that you can see out here. This is a hollow fiber, let us say, right. And what do we have? Membrane module which is to be installed in a rack or cassette, rack or cassette and uh, an individual hollow fiber. And one other aspect is sometimes uh, you will also have attached growth, not only suspended growth, but again that varies depending on the kind of system that you want to have. Here you see these membranes being lowered into the relevant tank. Again, as we mentioned, you know, the water will throw uh, flow around it and then will have to flow through this membrane. Thus, the microbes will not be able to pass through the membrane and the clear water will move out of the system, let us say, right. Let us move on. So, air bubbles in an MBR, as you can see, model MBR where you have the membranes and the aeration occurring together. Again, different kinds of aeration, let us say. So, we talked about different kinds of uh, aeration or activated sludge process, but one that is pretty widely used or uh, very much coming up within the, uh, at least within uh, India is the sequential batch reactor. Sequential batch reactor, right. Why? If the first case efficiency will be greater because if we look at the way that it is going to be run or operated, you will see that the rates are going to be similar to what you would expect in a completely, not completely mixed, uh, in a plug flow system. And also you will see that the area requirements are much, much lesser, let us see. So, let us see, you know, or let us try to understand how the biological process are uh, taken care of within this batch reactor. When we say batch reactor, what does it mean? There is no continuous flow coming in, no continuous flow going out. So, what is going to happen or how do we, you know, treat the continuous flow uh, coming in from the distribution network or sewerage network, pardon me. So, you typically have more than one SBR, sequential batch reactors at a minimum of two, if not more, let us see. And then you can have an equalization tank and then you will have bioselectors depending on how advanced it is, but we will discuss that later. So, this tank will be in a different cycle, tank 1 and this tank will be in a different cycle. So, we will look at the case where we have two tanks because we will be looking at a video of a sewage treatment plant in IIT Roorkee that is based on SBR, sequential batch reactor. So, let us try to understand the system and then move on to looking at the relevant uh, video, right. So, what is it that we have? First, the waste water is coming in, right. So, you have filling here, right. You have filling and then after the tank is full or depending upon the relevant uh, scenario, what do you have? You are going to have aeration, let us say, aeration, where you are going to provide the relevant uh, oxygen for the microbes to degrade, degrade your waste. So, one aspect during aeration is that 
unlike the complete limbing system note that this is a batch system once it is filled the, there is no more inflow right so now we have waste water at let's say you know 150 milligram per liter and the rate of the substrate utilization or the rate of degradation of the microbes will certainly be not microbes rate of degradation of our waste will be depend upon the strength of the waste water so let's say it's going to be depend upon the concentration over time this 150 will keep coming down 100 70 or 20 or so on and so forth so rate will come down but if we look at the r average it's certainly going to be much better than a completely mixed system which will always try to maintain a much lower uh, what do we say concentration inside the system let's see again that's one aspect to uh, keep in mind so first what do we have we have we are filling the tank and then we have the aeration and then you will have the settling as in when you will stop the air you know if you have continuous aeration obviously you are going to have turbulence the flocks that have formed or the kind of microbes that have formed will not be able to settle down so you'll have want to have stop aeration and have settling let's say right and after these microbes have settled down let's say you want to remove the clear water from the top so that is called decanting so after decanting now the tank is uh, again empty so what's going to happen the next batch of wastewater is going to come in as in you are again going to have a new set of wastewater coming into the tank which is filling again aeration again settling again decanting and then again the cycle repeats so these are the four cycles so some aspects that we need to discuss before we go ahead and look at the video is that with respect to aeration i know that we haven't yet talked about nitrogen removal or such in great detail but we know that uh, for nitrification and denitrification to occur again at least at some conditions you want to have anoxic conditions and even for phosphorus removal you will have what do we say certain conditions that need to be maintained so in sbr you have greater control about the kind of aeration and also the level of aeration that you want to achieve or can achieve and thus you can achieve nutrient removal during sbr process again we'll look at that later but this is something that we uh, what do we say are going to look at it in a video let's see right so but i see that i'm almost out of time i will end this uh, session for today in the next session we are going to look at the sbr system or process or the sbr sewage treatment plant at iit Roorkee. again the crux of the issue is you are going to fill up this batch reactor meaning no co flow coming in no flow going out and after you fill it up you are going to pump air in aeration and then after the relevant time which you design you are going to stop this aeration and then you are going to let the plant uh, what do we say the reactor have quiescent conditions such that it settles down and then you are going to decant the clear water right so with that i will end today's session thank you